Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to another SCP reading. Today, we'll be starting with SCP-094, a miniature event horizon. Then, we'll go to SCP-095, the atomic adventures of Ronnie Raygun, and finally finishing off with the absolute classic of SCP-096, The Shy Guy. That one took a few hours to record, and it's 30 minutes long, so I hope you enjoy that, because honestly, I, despite the length, I did. But yes, right to it then. Item number. SCP-094. Object Class Keter. Special Containment Procedures. Since SCP-094 is apparently immovable, a research and containment facility has been built around its location. Centered at 40 blank south, 60 blank west in the guise of an Argentinian military research base. No unauthorized persons or aircraft may come within one kilometer of the site, enforced by joint SCP and Argentinian forces. SCP-094 itself is enclosed in a gas-permeable steel-reinforced plexiglass cube, three meters on a side with a single door, also a reinforced plexiglass. On one side, the door must remain locked at all times, except with O5 authorization under tightly controlled conditions. This cube is kept in the center of a 20 meter by 20 meter room, accessible with level 4 authorization. All personnel must secure themselves to tethers anchored to the walls before stepping onto the floor of the room. Security personnel are to be armed with tranquilizer guns in addition to standard armaments. Description. SCP-094 appears to be a perfectly black sphere, 163 centimeters in diameter, suspended approximately 3 meters off the ground with no apparent means of support. 094 has been classified as a miniature event horizon. Any matter that moves into 094, including light, is irretrievably gone. However, 094 is not a black hole since it does not exert a gravitational pull. 094 has been known to occasionally emit a number of different sounds, including ambient sounds of nature, static buzzing, and sometimes human speech. No attempts to communicate with 094 have yet succeeded. It is unknown whether these sounds come from 094 itself, from something or things inside 094, or from some area that connects through 094. A small percentage of persons appear to be drawn to 094 because of the sound it emanates. 094 was discovered in 1920 blank in the Chubut province of southern Argentina, and at the time was estimated to be 20 to 25 centimeters in diameter. Analysis of historical records indicate that the diameter of 095 doubles in size approximately every 31 years. Primary research activities on 095 are concentrated on finding how to stop or reverse its growth without inducing cataclysmic failure. Addendum The hand on SCP-1032 designated SCP-1032-15, will achieve its midnight event on 0904-2690, approximately the same date as SCP-094 will fully engulf the Earth at its current rate of expansion. Note. A few millimeters a month may not seem like much, And no, at the moment you cannot see 095 change day by day, but if it continues its exponential growth in less than 250 years, it will be a kilometer wide, including vertically. And that is assuming it does not grow even faster, which is an assumption that almost no one here makes. Dr. Lewin Garcia. Item number. SCP-095, Object Class, Safe, Special Containment Procedures SCP-095 is to be placed in a standard polyethylene sleeve when not under scheduled research, and stored in a standard locked filing cabinet to prevent damage or wear. 
High-resolution digital scans are available for any Level 1 and above personnel who wish to view SCP-095. Description 095 appears to be a set of three moderately aged black and white comic books printed in 1932. The front and rear covers are missing, and several pages have been rendered illegible due to water damage. It was found by Agent Blank in a small antique shop in Denver, Colorado, and purchased for a small fee without incident. The owner of the shop had apparently not read them past the publisher's date on the first page. Forensic inspections of SCP-095 have revealed it to be genuine, though completely unremarkable save for its content. It is printed on cheap pulp paper and inked with dyes common to other publications of its era. The publisher's stamp indicates it was produced by Future Funnies, a company operating out of the town of Purple Lake, Ohio. All research inquiries thus far have shown both the company and the town to be completely non-existent. The comic itself is a pulp science fiction story entitled The Atomic Adventures of Ronnie Raygun, featuring a lead character bearing an unmistakable resemblance to former United States President Ronald Reagan. Each story opens with a large panel reading, In the far-fetched future world of the 1980s, only Ronald Reagan can save the day. It appears to follow an episodic format, with one self-contained story per publication. The three stories are briefly described below. Ronnie vs. Space Admiral Carter this story pits planetary governor Ronnie Reagan and his sidekick, Space Major Herbert, against the titular Space Admiral Carter as they both vie for the position of Space Marshal. The events loosely follow the events of the 1980 presidential election. Space Assassin! This story follows a character named Spaceman Hinckley as he prepares to assassinate Space Marshal Reagan. He manages to catch Raygun by surprise and wound him with his Devastator Ray, before being subdued by Raygun's soldiers. The events obviously refer to the 1981 assassination attempt by John Hinckley Jr. Jungle Planet! This story follows Raygun's attempts to create an army of robots on the jungle-covered planet of Nisa in order to protect it from the evil Sand Bandits. Although Raygun is told that he will lose his command if he interferes with the events on planet Nika, he sends his lieutenant, Space Colonel West, to secretly build a force under the cover of the jungle. When their plan is discovered, Space Colonel West publicly takes the blame and saves his superior. The storyline appears to be a simplified retelling of the Iran-Contra controversies of 1986. Possibly most interesting is the final page of each book, which advertises other stories published by future funnies. Investigation is underway to locate any surviving copies at once. The advertised stories are listed below. Space Major Herbert Assumes Command Starman Willy vs. The Space Succubus Globe Walker in Sneak Attack Barry Beetlejuice on Planet Avgar Diamond Donnie in Putting on the Ritz Sky Marm Sarah of The Ice World Flying Franken vs. Rocket Rush Star Command Proton in a losing battle. The new menace, death to mankind. Personal log of Dr. Blank. Date, 10-06-2004. I don't think I need to emphasize how important it is to recover any and all of the advertised stories immediately, the final two in particular. Item number, SCP-096, Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. 
096 is to be contained in its cell, a 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter airtight steel cube at all times. Weekly checks for any cracks or holes are mandatory. There are to be absolutely no video surveillance or optical tools of any kind inside 096's cell. Security personnel will use pre-installed pressure sensors and laser detectors to ensure 096 is present inside the cell. Any and all video, photos, or recordings of SCP-096's likeness are strictly forbidden without approval from Dr. Blank and O5-. Blank. Description SCP-096 is a humanoid creature measuring approximately 2.38 meters in height. Subject shows very little muscle mass, with preliminary analysis of body mass suggesting mild malnutrition. Arms are grossly out of proportion with the rest of the subject's body, with an approximate length of 1.5 meters each. Skin is mostly devoid of pigmentation, with no sign of any body hair. 096's jaw can open to four times the norm of an average human. Other facial features remain similar to an average human with the exception of it, the eyes, which are also devoid of pigmentation. It is not yet known whether 096 is blind or not. It shows no signs of any higher brain functions and is not considered to be sapient. 096 is normally extremely docile with pressure sensors inside its cell indicating it spends most of the day pacing by the eastern wall. However, when someone views SCP-096's face, whether it be directly, via video recording, or even a photograph, it will enter a stage of considerable emotional distress. 096 will cover its face with its hands and begin screaming, crying, and babbling incoherently. Approximately 1 to 2 minutes after the first viewing, 096 will begin running to the person who viewed its face, who will from this point on be referred to as 096-1. Documented speeds have varied from 35 km an hour to blank km an hour, and seems to depend on the distance from 096-1. At this point, no known material or method can impede 096's progress. The actual position of 096-1 does not seem to affect 096's response. It seems to have an innate sense of 096-1's location. Note, this reaction does not occur when viewing artistic depictions. See document 096-1. Upon arriving at 096-1's location, 096 will proceed to kill and data expunge 096-1. 100% of cases have left no traces of 096-1. 096 will then sit down for several minutes before regaining its composure and becoming docile again. It will then attempt to make its way back to its natural habitat, data redacted. Due to the possibility of a mass chain reaction, including breach of foundation secrecy and large civilian loss of life, retrieval of the subject should be considered alpha priority. Dr. Blank has also petitioned for immediate termination of 096, see interview 096-1, and then crossed out is order is awaiting approval, and following the crossed out portion, termination order has been approved, and is to be carried out by Dr. Blank on data redacted, see incident 096-1-A. Audio log from interview 096-1. Interviewer, Dr. Blank. Interviewed, Captain Retired, Blank. Former Commander of Retrieval Team Zulu 9-A. Retrieval Incident, 096-1-A. Begin Log. Blank, Blank Time, Research Area, Blank. Captain. It always sucks ass to get initial retrieval duty. You have no idea what the damn thing is capable of besides what jacked up information the field techies can scrape up and you're lucky if they tell you the whole story. They told us to bag tag. Didn't tell us jack shit about not looking at the damn thing. Doctor. 
Could you describe the mission, please? Captain. Yes, yeah, sorry. We had two choppers, one with my team and one on backup with Zulu 9B and Dr. Blank. We spotted the target about two clicks north of our patrol path. I'm guessing he wasn't facing our direction, or else he would have taken us out then and there. Doctor. Your report says 096 didn't react to the cold? It was negative blank degrees Celsius. Captain. Actually, it was negative blank. And yes, it was butt naked and didn't so much as shiver. Anyway, we landed, approached the target, and Corporal Blank got ready to bag it. That's when Dr. Blank called. I turned to answer it, and that's what saved me. The target must have turned, and the whole squad saw it. Doctor. That's when SCP-096 entered an agitated emotional state. Captain. Yep. Interviewed now pauses for a second before continuing. Sorry, got the willies for a second. Doctor, that's all right. Captain. Yeah, well, I never saw its face. My squad did, and they paid for it up the ass. Doctor, could you describe it a little more, please? Captain. Pauses. Yeah, yeah. It started screaming at us and crying. Not animal roaring, though. Sounded exactly like a person. Really fucking creepy. We started firing when it picked up Corporal Blank and ripped off his leg. God, he was screaming for help. Fucking A. Anyway, we were blowing chunks out of the target. Round after round didn't do jack shit. I almost lost it when it started. Data expunged. Him. Doctor. That was when you ordered the use of an... Papers are hard moving. AT4HEDT launcher? Captain. An anti-tank gun. Started carrying it ever since SCP blank got loose. I've seen those tear through tanks like tissue paper. Did the same thing to the target. Doctor. There was significant damage to... 096? Captain. It didn't even fucking flinch. It kept tearing apart my squad, but with half its torso gone. He draws a large half-circle across his torso. Doctor. But it was taking damage. Captain. If it was, it wasn't showing it. It must have lost all its organs, all its blood, but it didn't acknowledge any of it. Its bone structure wasn't hurt at all, though. It kept Tearing my squad apart. Doctor. So, no actual structural damage. How many rounds would you say were fired at SCP-096? Captain. At the least, a thousand. Our door gunner kept his GAU-19 on it for uh, at least 20 seconds. 20 fucking seconds. That's 650 caliber rounds pumped into that thing. Might as well have been spitting at it. Doctor. This is when Zulu 9B arrived? Captain. Yeah, and my squad was gone. Zulu 9B managed to get the bag over its head and it just sat down. We got it into a chopper and got it here. I don't know how I never saw its face. Maybe God or Buddha or whoever thought I should live. A jackass. Doctor. We have obtained an artist's depiction of 096's face. Would you like to view it? Captain. Pauses. You know, after hearing that thing screams, and the screams of my men, I don't think I want to put a face to what I heard. No. Just, no. Doctor. All right. I believe we're done here. Thank you, Captain. Chairs are heard moving, and footsteps leave the room. Captain Retired Plank is confirmed to have left interview room 22. Doctor, let this be on record that I am formally requesting 096 be terminated as soon as possible. End log. Document number 096-1. 
documentation of 096-1 of experiment 096-1. Experiment 096-1 is headed by Dr. Dan. Purpose is to test 096's abilities while obtaining complete physical description of 096. D9031 is a 32-year-old convicted felon and former tattoo artist. D9031 is placed inside Bathosphere 303-A, which is then lowered in the Tonga Trench off the coast of New Zealand. Position is approximately blank kilometers from SCP-096's temporary containment cell at site blank. The following was recorded via video surveillance inside Bathosphere 303-A. Between it and Dr. Dan's control site on the New Zealand mainland. Bathosphere 303-A reaches final depth of 10,800 meters. D-9031. It's stopped. What now? Dr. Dan. Do you feel fine? No sickness? Anything? D. My ears hurt. Doctor. That should be expected. Now, on your left should be a steel container. Open it, and there will be a manila folder holding several photographs. Open it and describe the first photograph, please. D9031 complies. The camera is located so the photograph cannot be seen. D. Nothing. It's an empty cell. Doctor. Thank you. Uh, please set this photograph face down in the receptacle to your right, uh, and look at the next photograph. D. It's the same cell, but there's a foot in it, I think. Doctor. Describe it, please. D. Uh, it's pale and bony. Sort of creepy, actually. Doctor. Please... Place the photograph in the receptacle, face down, and look at the next one. D. Okay. Pause. Oh, shit. Doctor. Please describe the photograph. D. It's a... I don't know, some creepy-ass person. Doctor. Describe the photograph, please. D. Help, man. He's pale, has white eyes, and something's fucked up is happening with his mouth. What the hell is this thing? At this point, approximately 1332 standard time, Dr. Dan and experimental control is notified that 096 has breached containment. The fastest path to 096-1 has been cleared of civilians and other image capturing devices, and 096 is now being tracked by satellites via tracking collar. Doctor, on your right there should be another steel container. Open it. SCP-096-1. It's a uh, bad paper and a pencil. Doctor Dan, yes, please draw a sketch of the photograph you saw. SCP-096-1 mumbles an expletive and spends the next 20 minutes drawing a sketch of the photograph. At the time of completion, SCP-096 is confirmed to be blank kilometers away from SCP-096-1. SCP-096-1. I'm done. Doctor. Good. Place the drawing in the receptacle on your left and close the door. SCP-096-1 complies and the sketch leaves Bathosphere 303-A in a watertight buoyancy container. The other photographs are then incinerated in the onboard incinerator. SCP-096-1 Uh, what now? Doctor, please stand by. 40 minutes pass. 096 is now confirmed to be at 096-1's position and is diving. Transponder signal ends at 9,339 meters as pressure goes beyond the device's operational limits. The camera shows the bathosphere shaking slightly, and from 096-1's reaction, it is assumed that 096 is on the hull and is visible through the viewport. 096-1 Oh fuck! Shit shit! Shit! What the fuck is that?! 
Video and audio feed is cut as the hull of Bathosphere 303-A is breached. SCP-096 is recovered by the surface recovery team Foxtrot 303-A without incident. Sketch of SCP-096 is also recovered and a quick test confirms no hostile reaction from 096. Sketch is sent to experiment control on New Zealand while SCP-096 is moved to permanent containment. Incident 096-1-A So containment has been attained? Yes, Doctor. Let me see the security footage. Begin log. A large steel cube is shown in the middle of a research lab, which is teeming with a dozen or so researchers. In view of the camera is a control booth displaying readings from the various sensors inside the cube. Fast forward. 1 minute 32 seconds. The control booth operator leans forward, alerted to the various readings on the sensors. Approximately five seconds later, a steel wall on the containment cube receives a sizable dent bending forward. The dent becomes larger before breaking. 096 is seen bending the steel away, frantically trying to escape. Emergency plates drop on the cube as a containment breach is sounded. The security tape has SCP-096's face blurred out as per containment protocol. Two security teams enter the room as SCP-096 breaks out of containment. Live rounds and tranquilizer darts are fired with no visible effect. Approximately 90% of the researchers and security personnel have directly viewed 096's face, and a code lima is declared. The room and surrounding areas are sealed and flushed with blank class nerve agent. Approximately two minutes later, SCP-096 breaches research site blank and travels blank kilometers per hour through the outside desert. Traveling blank. End log. Echo Romeo was uh, assigned to the immediate containment breach. When we realized just how big a breach we were dealing with, we were completely overwhelmed. Funny how even the best and brightest minds of the world can be so unprepared. So you're saying it's your own fault? Absolutely not. This was a new discovery in SCP-096's behavior. We had no way to know, and we were lucky it did not turn into an XK. Begin log. Helm cam footage from ER-1. Footage from inside a UH-60 shows SCP-096 on the desert floor, moving at considerable speed. ERA. This is Echo Romeo Actual. We have visual on the target. Unintelligible. At data expunged. Not send increasing. ERA listens to the radio as orders identified as coming from Dr. Dan are relayed. SCP-096 can be seen slowly gaining speed. ERA motions off camera. ER-3 appears, holding a modified XM-500 anti-material rifle. Two shots are fired. The first misses, and the second hits SCP-096 in the lower leg. SCP-096 stumbles but recovers. Speed change is insignificant. ERA. Unintelligible. Pete, no effect on target. ERA motions to ER-3 again. ER-3 fires three more shots. The first two miss, and the third hits SCP-096 in the head. SCP-096 falls, skids, and rolls several times, reducing its speed minimally. SCP-096 rolls to its feet and continues unabated. Camera pans up to see eight V-22 Ospreys belonging to MTF Tau-1 flying overhead and past the helicopters on the same outbound vector as SCP-096. Camera cuts out. End log. Begin log. Video interview log 096-1-A. Dr. Oleski appears very calm, determined, and answers all questions slowly and deliberately. Interviewer. Where were you exactly at the time of breach? Dr. Oleski. 
on break, getting a cup of coffee. It was pure luck I wasn't caught in the containment area. Interviewer. Describe your actions directly after the containment breach. Dr. Alasky. I sent uh, Echo Romeo after SCP-096 and alerted Dr. Dan to the situation. We then set up the task of locating SCP-096-1. Once the general direction of 096 was determined, I sent Mobile Task Force Tau-1 ahead to evacuate civilian population centers in 096's path, all according to containment protocol. End log. Begin log. Video interview log 096-1-B. Dr. Daniel Dan Blank sits patiently. On the table in front of him is what looks to be a set of modified night vision goggles. Interviewer. For the record, where were you exactly during SCP-096's containment breach? Dr. Dan. In the data expunged, Mountain Range tried to find more information on SCP-096's origins. It was a quick research expedition, so I left Dr. Oleski in charge of containment. He is competent enough, if a bit eager, and has proven himself in the past. This is all confirmed by the various related paperwork, so don't go thinking. Interviewer. It was just for the record, Doctor. Now, uh, knowing that SCP-096 is immune to all known forms of damage while in an enraged state, why would you order the sniper attacks from the emergency response team? Dr. Dan, why not? If there was a chance to slow down 096 and give MTF Tau 1 more time, then we had to try it. It put ER in no danger, and the choppers were in danger of being outrun anyway. Honestly, ER could do little else to help or harm the situation. Interviewer. I see. Now, could you explain this? Interviewer motions at the goggles lying on the table. Dr. Dan. Yes, this is Project Scramble. An eyepiece we assigned to ER and MTF Tau-1. Designed by Dr. Oleski and myself specifically for SCP-096. It carries a small microprocessor which constantly analyzes the viewing field for the facial features of 096. Facial recognition software already instantly identifies them, scrambling the image into an unrecognizable mess before the light reaches the human eye. It's quite ingenious, really. Interviewer. And expensive. Dr. Dan. Very. Which is why it's such a shame that it didn't work. End log. Begin log. Audio transcript between MTF Tau 1 and modified EG3 Sentries AWACS, callsign Big Brother. MTF T1. Upgrade in the air, moving. Data expunged. At. Data expunged. Awaiting Victor. Big Brother. Electronics Online. Cruising altitude reached. Uploading program scramble to all camera systems. Cameras online, Big Brother is now watching. MTF T1. What outbound vector is the target currently added? Big Brother. Target is currently westbound, traveling on uh, shit. Yeah, he's on I 40. I think he just flipped a semi. Um, outbound vector is. Data expunged. Degrees by. Data expunged. Next down on this vector is. Data expunged. I'd say a couple hundred kilometers? Shit. MTF, we're suggesting Echo Romeo begin evacuating the I-40. I don't know how many cars the target has wrecked. MTF, T1. Hold on, that's a negative. Big Brother, ER is reporting that the target is outrunning her choppers. They can't get ahead of them. Big Brother. Then get them to stop motorists on the other lane. I don't know how many people have to see this thing's face. End log. The first three elements of Tau-1 succeeded in gathering the townsfolk in the first three towns without incident. 096-1 was confirmed to not be in any of these when 096 ran through each in turn without stopping. 
However, a video log in MTF Tau shows 096-1 being identified in the town of Data Expand and the ensuing incident. Show it. Begin log. Helmcam footage from Element 4 of MTF Tau 1 in the town of Data Expunged. Most of the townspeople are gathered in the square, all blindfolded. Helicopters sweep the town. Indistinct orders are heard over loudspeakers from both helicopters and ground personnel. MTF T1 over Tau Com radio and loudspeakers. The target is entering proximity zone. All units activate scramble gear and begin crowd control procedures. All civilians are not to move from their spot or remove their blindfolds. If you move or touch your blindfold, you will be shot. I repeat, all civilians are... Orders are drowned out by a loud shriek coming from the outside of the camera's view. Approximately two kilometers away, SCP-096 is seen to be coming over the crest of the hills. It tries to slow down on the descent, but trips and tumbles down at high speed crashing through several houses before regaining its footing almost without delay. Unknown voice over loudspeakers. Unintelligible. Civilians, do not move! You will be shot! I repeat! Unintelligible. Several shots are heard, none of which are directed at SCP-096. SCP-096 stops for one second before running into the crowd of townsfolk throwing many aside and trampling more. More shots are heard as the crowd begins dispersing, the loudspeakers unintelligible under the vocalizations of 096. 096 locates 096-1, a middle-aged man, and the camera views 096 grabbing him before it is hit by a fleeing townsperson and is dislocated from the helmet. End log. Begin log. Video interview log 096-1-C. Major Jack Wilford, current commander of MTF Tau 1. I was looking through SCP 096 1's house with my squad. Poor bastard was a semi pro mountaineer, took a trip to the blank. Apparently, he took a snapshot of the landscape and just happened to catch SCP 096 in the background. Wilford holds up four fingers for emphasis. Wilford. Four pixels. Four fucking pixels. I doubt the guy even knew what he saw. He was probably just looking at the picture one day, noticed an off-color patch of snow, and went on with his day. Interviewer. How did you find him? Wilford. Uh, scramble gear picked up right away. The lieutenant got the picture and took it down to the chopper before I ever got to see it. By then, the damn monster had taken down Big Brother and it had already peeled open the former Major Stryker. All hell was breaking loose. Interviewer. So the scramble gear was ineffective. Wilford. Ineffective? The goddamn scramble gear were pieces of shit that killed the entire damn task force. You know, only three people are alive besides me. All because some retarded egghead thought a state-of-the-art countermeasure to SCP-096's hostile reaction. Those bloody idiots could have just put a bag over the target's head and be done with it, but no! We had to use the state-of-the-fucking-art scramble! End log. On screen is a picture secured by MTF Tau. SCP-096 circled in yellow and blacked out. Begin log. Dr. Dan. What did that fucker call me? Dr. Dan pushes back the table and begins standing up. Dr. Dan. I'll show that goddamn son of a bitch what an egghead is after I bash open his- Interviewee begins shouting and cursing. Two guards enter the room and push Dr. Dan back into the seat. Interviewer. Do we need to administer a sedative, doctor? Dr. Dan takes a breath and smooths his coat. Dr. Dan. No, no, I apologize. Scramble was a really ingenious idea. However, it was a failure because we did not fully know how SCP-096 worked. You see, as the chip inside Scramble picked up SCP-096's facial features and began scrambling them, 
There was a split second of uninterrupted light flow to the retina. Computers are fast, but not as fast as light, so there was a split second image of SCP-096's direct face sent to the brain. It wasn't even consciously received, but apparently it was enough to trigger the hostile reaction of SCP-096. Interviewer. So, with this report of the photograph, Dr. Dan. That's the most disturbing part of this whole incident. You know when the former SCP-096-1 went on his mountain trip? 1990 blank. That's blank years of that photo hanging there before he saw SCP-096. Since the brain doesn't need to be aware that it is viewing SCP-096's face to trigger the reaction, there can be ticking time bombs hidden literally anywhere in the world. How many photographs out there containing SCP-096 just going unnoticed, waiting for a careful eye? As I said before, I want this thing terminated now. End log. Just a quick question, Doctor. Um, what exactly were you planning on doing there? Major Jack Wilford was top-notch SBS when we recruited him. I was also a recon corpsman, sir, and we were deployed in the Caucasus. Marines beat SBS. No, they don't. Enough, both of you. Moving on. Begin log. Video interview log 096-1-D. Chief Master Sergeant Blank, door gunner under Echo Romeo. I got bag over its head. Interviewer. Yes, you told me that. Could you tell me exactly what transpired? Blank. It, uh... It was done with all its... It was sitting there, in, in the highway. Just got done ripping open a minivan. Interviewee is silent. Interviewer. And? Blank. I'm, uh... Wes landed the chopper. I got out and bagged it. I put the bag over its head, and it got calm, and they took it. Interviewer. So the victims in the minivan were the last to have viewed SCP-096's face. Interviewee is silent. Interviewer. Blank? Interviewee remained silent for the remainder of the interview and was released. He was later found in his bunk room, having committed suicide via hanging with a makeshift rope. A half-crushed pacifier was found in his fist. End log. Begin log. Video log 096-1-D confiscated tape from news broadcast CNN. The image shows first responders surrounding the remains of a crashed plane over the shoulder of a field reporter. Reporter. The plane, which seems to be military in origin, has no outward markings designating it as part of the U.S. military. While first responders look for a black box recording, it is thought by police that the plane crashed due to a massive cabin breach in both the cockpit and fuselage. The reporter motions to a large hole in the side of the plane, which several firefighters are climbing inside. Reporter. Paramedics have only found three bodies, which is odd for a plane apparently requiring a crew of around 20 men. Police have suggested... The reporter is cut off as three super stallions are shown hovering overhead two of which land and began unloading troops belonging to MTF Epsilon. MTF E1. Shut up the camera! Shut up the motherfucking- End log. Begin log. Dr. Oleski. So, are we finished here? Interviewer. One last question, Doctor, or statement, as it seems. We find it interesting that there is no break room at research site blank. Or coffee. Interviewee remains silent. Interviewer. We think it would be best if he began talking. Remainder of video interview log 096-1-A redacted. End log. I don't see what this has to do with me. There is no reason to play dumb doctor, he's told us everything. Well then, I guess there's no use feigning anything, is there? 
Audio recording, O5 hearing, O5-1. Upon reviewing your testimony and available footage and the confession of the late Dr. Oleski, it is the unanimous agreement of the O5 that you are to be terminated for your part in the gross breach of SCP-096. Dr. Dan. And I thought you would know the meaning of for the greater good. O5-1. Do not try my patience, doctor. Given the incident's scope and potential, the O5 have approved your request for the termination of SCP-096. Given the lack of personnel with understanding of SCP-096, the termination will be entrusted to you under heavy guard and the personal supervision of me. Your own termination will be scheduled at a later date. End log. That's horrible, Doctor. How could you knowingly... It worked. There was only a matter of time until that happened in a major population center, and its face spread all over the world news. I can kill 096, but I've killed myself in the process. And that's the end of our SCP reading today. I hope you all enjoyed quite a bit. The last one was a little long, but I definitely have fun with some of the voices and such with that. But, without further ado, if you liked, I hope you'll leave a like, and if you want to see more, I hope you'll subscribe. But, thank you very much for coming. It's been a pleasure having you. Hope to see you all in the future, and good luck out there.